Hello everyone. Welcome back to Sudakoda. This is Ravina and today we're going to solve problem number 55 that is jump game. So let's start by reading the problem statement. It says that you are given an integer array nums. You are initially positioned at an array's first index and each element in the array represents your maximum jump length at that position. Return true if you can reach the last index, false otherwise. And we have a example here. So first let's try to understand what the problem needs us, needs from us. Okay. So let's go to the notepad. So what the problem is saying that we have an array and then we have some elements in it. And whatever the value, whatever the element inside that array is, how maximum can we jump? So basically, if this is three, that means that I can jump at one with length two and then length three. We can only jump in the right direction. So if you are here, say, if you are at two, then you can jump two times. You can jump with length one and length two. If you are suppose here, that means that you, but you don't have anything. You can jump zero of zero length. That means you stay here. So that is what the problem is. Uh, we can actually solve this problem using, you know, backtracking or greedy approach. I'm going to just walk you through the backtracking approach and then tell you why we are not doing it and then actually implement the greeting approach with you. So let's start. Uh, I'm going to just write this down again. So what's going to happen is with backtracking, we are going to, so it's look, going to look something like this. We have index 0, 1, 2, 3 and 4. So these are my indexes. Uh, let me actually do this in a different color. So 0, 1, 2, 3 and 4. I'm going to start with my index 0 at the top and then see what is my value at 0. It's 3 and so that means that I can have three parts in here. I can go from 3 to 2, I can go from 3 to 1 and then I can go from 3 to 0. So for that, I'm going to create three branches. It's going to be index 1, index 2 and index 3. Once I do that, I'll be like, OK, I have now three other branches. Let me explore them. So I come here with my first branch and I see what do I have here? I have two. And what can I explore with that? So that I have two length, right? So I can go from here to uh, index 2. Otherwise, I can go to index 3. I have two steps. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to explore it with index 2. And then I can go to index 3. All right. Let's see how we can uh, expand the element, uh, the index 2. Okay. So right now, I ha I'm here. This is my index 2. I check. Okay. I have 1 in here. So that means the maximum I can go is one. So I'm going to go through one. So what is that index? That is index three. So I come here, I get index three. I go in and look at my third index. Now I just, I'm just doing breadth per search, you know, just going through each and every level and all the elements and just expanding it. So I come here, I come to three. I'm like, okay, how, what value do I have here? I have zero. That means that. I cannot go anywhere from here. That means that has come to an halt. So this is actually a dead end. That means we cannot go any farther from three. All right. I come back. I come here. I see another three, which is right here. If I, tr if I try and recollect three was not three was a dead end. So this also becomes a dead end. I come back. I'm, I'm going to explore this two right here, the two index. So I'm here, which is two. This is two index. So the value is one. That means I can go one level to the right. And so I'm going to write that down. I'm going to write three. I come to this three here. Um, I see that, oh, it's actually a dead end. We already know that from, from our first scenario. So this becomes a dead end. I come back to the last one and this is also a dead end. So you see, there is no way for us to reach the last element. And that is why it's going to return false. 
Now, this is the backtracking approach, and this is going to repeat for each and every index. Remember that. So, for example, we started with zero. For the next one, we are going to increment our counter and we are going to start from one. So, it's going to happen for each and every element as the root, and it's going to calculate that tree. The time complexity of this is actually n raised to n because there are n possibilities of the tree and there are n elements so that's why it's n raised to n you can somehow optimize it by using memoization now what you can do is if you look at it you will see that 2 has been calculated here and then 2 is again calculated here so that means that when i calculated 2 i could have you know just stored it somewhere so i could say something like you know the 2 index at 2 index the value is actually false because that leads to a dead end and then when i come across 2 so when i come across here i'll be like oh i already know the value of 2 from the memoist point memoist point so i just update that so i don't need to calculate this part so you can save on uh, save on some uh, complexity some time complexity and that time complexity is actually going to be n raised to 2 now that is the backtracking with memoization. But we are going to do today a greedy approach. And that greedy approach is going to give us a linear time. So let's see how we will be approaching that. For the greedy approach, we are going to check how far right can we go. So that means that, for example, I'm going to just tweak this one. I'm going to take another example, same example, but I'm just going to add additional element here. So let's see. For if I start at 3, the farthest I can go is really, you know, let me write down the indexes as well. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Okay. If I'm starting at 3, how far can I go? I can go to, you know, my index is 0. I'm at 3. So 0 plus 3 is 3. I can go here. I can go 3 steps. If I start from 2, how farther can I go? I can still go to 0. Remember, 1 and 2. If I start from 1, it's going to also take me to 0. And you see, this 0 is actually a dead end for us. It doesn't really matter if you are you, if you are calculating, if you are in your loop, in your I loop, and you reach here. If you reach at 1, you will be like, oh yeah, I'm just one step away from 4. But it doesn't really matter because your cursor couldn't, your cursor couldn't reach at zero it could not move past zero because zero doesn't have any jump length and because zero doesn't have any jump length it cannot jump from zero to one so there is a break a breakage right here so that is the reason we are going to calculate a farthest right that is going to see how far can we move if we start from a certain point and then we are going to keep track of our i simultaneously and then we are going to check if my farthest right is actually less than my i or my i is greater than my farthest right then we return false then we say that we cannot reach the end and this is the perfect example of it so let's see uh, let's go through the steps and see how it's gonna pan out okay so first thing is i'm going to have my farthest right so i'm going to have my fr farthest right right here and i'm going to have my i here first i check i check is my i greater than my farthest right not right now my i is zero and my farthest right is also zero zero greater than zero no okay i go to the next equation i then check is what is my farthest right going to be the what is going to be the maximum it's going to be here it's going to be actually i plus x so it's going to come to this place which is zero all right and then i update my farther right i update my farther right now i go to my next element in my i i am right here I'll check, is my i greater than my father right? No, it's not. That means I can still calculate things. Now I'll check, what is my father right going to be? My father right, father right is going to be my max of the father right that I already have or my i plus x. So the father right I already have is 3. My father x, my, my i plus x is going to be 
really 1 plus 2 which is 3 and that is also going to point to 0. So my right, farther right actually stays the same. Now my i increments again. My i is here. I'll check if is my i greater than my farther right. No, it is not. Okay. Now how many ways can I reach forward? It's length is 1. So I can go one length forward. That is again 3. And I'm going to check what is my maximum of farther right versus i plus x. My i plus x is actually 3. And my farther right is also 3. So it doesn't matter. My farther right stays 3. I increment my i. I now check. Is my i greater than my farther right? No, it is not. Both are 3. I'm going to calculate my farther right again. My farther right is going to be maximum of farther right and my i plus x. My x is actually these elements. Keep in mind that. So it's going to be 3 plus 0. It's again 3. So my farther right again comes out to be 3. Since it's already 3, it's not going to get updated. And then we move our i pointer here. Once we come here, we check, is my i actually greater than my father right yes it is then we return false and this is really important to understand why do we have that condition it took me a while to understand why do we need that condition it's because if you cannot see you have to have jumps to reach a particular step you to reach the end and if you have a breakage here it doesn't matter if you have links right here and you have links on the left you're never going to reach the end and that is the reason why you need to have a farther right with you now let's see how we can turn this into code it's actually really simple so let me open my editor all right so the first thing was our farthest right so my farthest right is going to be zero it's really confusing to say farthest right every time and then i am going to write a for loop so my for loop is going to be for every i and x in is in enumerate nums that means that it's going to read for every index and every element in the array and the first thing was to check is my i greater than my farthest which i misspelled farthest right if that is true, then you return false. That means that we are we have a breakage, right? And otherwise, what you are going to do is you are going to initialize your farthest right and get the maximum. What, are going, what is going to be your maximum? My maximum is going to be max of my farthest right or my i plus x. Once I have that, you know, if the whole loop executes properly, then in the end, you just return true. Let's see if this runs. Okay, let's submit. All right, so this solution is accepted. Now let's talk about the space and time complexity of this algorithm. So the time complexity of this algorithm is, as you can see, is linear. We are going through each and every element just once. So the time complexity of this algorithm is O of n, whereas the space complexity of this algorithm is constant because we are using just one variable that also to store a integer. So that's why the space complexity of this algorithm is going to be constant and the time complexity is going to be O of n. So I hope you like this video. I hope you like this solution. If you like my videos, please give it a thumbs up. Comment below. If you want me to solve any other questions, please let me know in the comments below. I'm also on Discord. So feel free to connect with me there. If you have any questions or you want to connect, I will be available there. And the code for this is going to be on my github repository and the link i will mention in the description below so thank you so much for watching and you have a nice day i will see you next time thank you so much